Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte Z77X-UP4TH. We'll start off with a closer look at the box for some of the specs. This is, of course, a Z77 chipset motherboard, which means it's an Intel motherboard, which also means it has the 1155 socket. 1155 socket supports, uh, well, LG 1155 right there, it supports second or third gen Intel core processors. That means you can do uh, Sandy Bridge or you can do Ivy Bridge. Just bear in mind some of the more advanced features of this motherboard, such as PCI Express Gen 3 our reliance on an Ivy Bridge or third generation Intel Core processor in order to make use of those. It's ultra durable 5 and they've included some uh, high quality MOSFETs for high current capability. A little bit more on that in the back. Here's some awards that have has been granted to the uh, uh, this series of ultra, dur ultra durable motherboards from Gigabyte. Best of Computex 2012. Uh, and then just some more information down here at the bottom about the chipset and the Intel logos. But uh, here on the back, there's much more information. So uh, first off, we have the uh, new IR Power Stage IR3550 uh, MOSFETs, which are kind of like MOSFET packages right up there, as you can see. Uh, 60 amp rated, so you're going to have fewer uh, actual actual. Uh, power phase stages on this motherboards, but they're rated for higher capacity, uh, higher amperage. Uh, so here's just sort of an example that they've given of uh, traditional MOSFETs, the lower RDS on MOSFETs that they've used in some of their uh, other motherboards, and then the IR3550. They run cooler, uh, cooler temps, gives you higher overclocks, gives you longer lifespan on the MOSFETs. Uh, this is an ultra durable motherboard. So over here on the left, as you can see, twice the copper and the PCB that uh, they like to use. It also has new glass fabric PCB construction. Uh, moving over to the right, we also have dual UEFI BIOS, which means that if you're doing BIOS updates, you can switch back and forth between the two. Uh, for instance, if you're updating your BIOS, uh, you don't have to worry about a power failure because you will have a backup, so handy feature to have. Uh, the TH in the UP4TH name of this motherboard is referring to Thunderbolt, TH for Thunderbolt. You actually have dual onboard Thunderbolt headers. If you're not familiar with Thunderbolts, uh, it's been available for Apple computers for a while, but now we're starting to see it implemented on PCs with the newest line of Intel uh, motherboards. So uh, here is sort of a really basic description of how Thunderbolt works. You have a uh, PCI Express bus and a display port. Uh, PCI Express goes two-way, of course. Display port is just feeding a display signal. goes into the Thunderbolt bolt cable where you see you have both of those. And then uh, on the other end, you have PCI Express again. Uh, to send and receive and then display port. So um, you can do data connections via the Thunderbolt headers and you can also power monitor and you also have triple monitor support available through Thunderbolt. Uh, of course you must have the correct capability of monitors to support that but uh, you can reference the manual for more information and the Thunderbolt does give you 10 gigabits per second uh, bandwidth which is a lot of bandwidth. Uh, some other information about the board, you get an MSATA connector on the on board. I will say some more info about that in the future. And uh, some other logos down here in the bottom right. Uh, you get USB 3.0, three times USB power, SATA Rev 3, of course. Uh, the Z77 chipset gives you stuff like Intel Smart Response technology for SSD caching. You have an HDMI and a DVI uh, output on the board. All Japanese solid caps for longer lifespan. Uh, on-off charging functionality, so you can charge devices via USB while your computer's off. Uh, you get support for two-way Crossfire X and two-way SLI on the board. Uh, as mentioned, PCI Gen 3 if you're going with an Ivy Bridge processor. And then since Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge processors have integrated GPUs, you can use Virtue MVP uh, to switch back and forth between the integrated GPU and a discrete graphics card. Also, the MVP in the newer Virtue software can actually help use your iGPU to improve your frame rates in games that you play. Next, we'll take a look inside the box for accessories. Here we have an input-output shield. It is uh, black, but also has some color labeling on there so you can tell what ports are what. Also has some uh, squishy electromagnetic shielding there on the back. We also have an SLI bridge. It's a flexible one, so it will work with different uh, slot combinations for uh, SLI configurations. Uh, if you want to use Crossfire, you will need a Crossfire bridge for Crossfire uh, compatibility with most cards. Those usually come with the AMD video cards that support Crossfire. Uh, we have serial ATA cables. These are all SATA Rev2 or Rev3 compatible. They all have uh, clasps to hold them in place. And then uh, looks like you get two with straight connectors on both ends, and you get two 
with uh, a straight connector and an L-shaped connector. You also have, of course, the ever-present motherboard manual. Uh, so you're going to want to keep this on hand while you're doing your build because it has important instructions for assembling a computer. Also, all of the details about the uh, included componentry on the board. Also, important information such as uh, the DIMM slots you'll need to install the memory to to make sure you use, have dual channel capability, etc. Uh, you get a gigabyte case badge right there to put on your case if you like case badges. You get the Gigabyte 7 Series Utility DVD. So this is going to have some of the Gigabyte software uh, included on it. It's also going to have drivers for all of the hardware on the motherboard. Chances are if you go over to the Gigabyte website you can download updated versions of the drivers and the software which is probably going to be your best bet but handy to have that just in case. Uh, I find the most use I usually get out of this disk is if the I don't have an internet connection right off the bat I'll at least pop in the disk to load up my LAN driver uh, so I can actually connect to the internet to download all the updated stuff. You get a multilingual installation guidebook as well so if English is not your first language you can use that instead of the uh, instruction manual I already showed you. That's all for accessories. Next up the motherboard. And here's a look at the motherboard itself. As you can see Gigabyte has gone with a primarily black color scheme. They also have uh, some gray, silver, blue highlights going on throughout. I'm actually going to flip it around here to the back really quick. As you can see, it's got a matte black PCB. It's quite nice looking. Uh, they have some added supports as well up here, right behind the power delivery, which has the uh, heat sinks that you can see attached to it up here at the top. Uh, next up, let me point out the fan headers on the board. There's uh, five of them total. They're all four pin fan headers. So you get two up here for a system fan and a CPU fan. That's one, two. Third one right here next to the dim slots, that's three. Uh, fourth one down here at the bottom, right next to the uh, input and output connect, I'm sorry, right next to the front panel connectors. And a fifth down here on the lower left, right below the PCI slots. So uh, let's take a really close up look at the board now. We're gonna start here in the bottom right and go over the various connectors and headers. So we have a COM header right there. Next to that, we have your front panel connector headers, and uh, they're kind of color-coded within there, and they also have a little layout there so you can tell which connector is which. Right here is the aforementioned 4-pin PWM fan header for a system fan. You have one, two, three USB 2.0 port headers. You also have a TPM header right there if you like to do the trusted platform module header thing, uh, the aforementioned system fan. Finally, your front panel audio connector down here in the lower left, which is also right next to all of your audio hardware. Also, you have an SPDIF input header right there. Next up, we have the PCI Express and PCI slots. So these are all the black ports that are right here. Uh, you'll notice you have one, two, three. 1x PCI Express connectors. Uh, those are all connected to a PLX uh, PCI Express uh, controller chip right there, so they're not going to interfere with the connectivity of the uh, larger 16x PCI Express slots. So you have a 16x PCI Express slot right here, uh, a 8x PCI Express slot right here, and a 4x PCI Express slot down here at the bottom. They're all full length PCI Express slots. You're only going to be able to make use of this lowest one if you actually have an Ivy Bridge processor that has a PCI Express Gen 3 controller. And then if you're going to be using a Crossfire X or SLI uh, two-card solution, the upper slot here uh, will default to 8x and 8x, or these two slots will default to 8x, 8x if you're using two. Uh, and if you do happen to go with three, you can get 8x, 4x, and 4x. Uh, if you're gonna, just going to be using a single, then of course the top one will run at full 16x speed. Also bear in mind PCI Express Gen 3 gives you effectively double the bandwidth of PCI Express Gen 2, uh, so there really aren't even any PCI Express Gen 3 cards on the market right now that will saturate that bus. So uh, plenty of connectivity options. Also you have a legacy standard PCI slot here right there if you have an older PCI card that you want to install. Moving on to the right, we have the Gigabyte logo and heatsink right there, and that's above the Z77 chipset, which controls quite a few things on the board, but most notably your serial ATA. So uh, right here you have six serial ATA ports. The white ones here are SATA Rev 3, that's 6 gigabit per second. Black ones are SATA Rev 2, that's 3 gigabit per second. And uh, since you also have an M SATA port on the board, that's what this red sticker is for. Uh, your SATA 2 port 5 uh, right here is actually going to be disabled if you happen to use the M SATA port, which is right up here. So 
Uh, MSATA, if you want to install an MSATA SSD right there, for example, uh, you can set it up for SSD caching. Or if you get a uh, higher capacity one, you can just run an operating system off it, for example, and that's going to run at piece. Uh, I'm sorry, that's going to run at SATA Rev 2 three, gig 3 gigabit per second bandwidth. Moving on up to the side of the board, over here we have a USB 3.0 front panel connector. So if you have a 20 19 slash 20 pin uh, USB 3.0 front panel connector. You plug it in right there to enable your front panel ports. Above that, you have your 24 pin primary motherboard power connector. The aforementioned system fan header right above that. And then, of course, you have your US, I'm sorry, your, <laughs> not USB, this, these are DDR3 slots for your memory. Uh, it's going to support DDR3 DIMMs of up to 8 gigabyte capacity per DIMM, so you can get up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory installed there if you max out all four slots. Uh, it's recommended to use 1.5 volt DDR3 memory. Uh, Intel with the internal memory controller in the Ivy Bridge chipset now officially supports uh, memory speeds up to 1600 and then of course you can go with overclock speeds beyond that. Uh, just bear in mind that it's not officially supported by the Intel spec. Uh, this is your 1155 socket right there. It's got the protective cover, it, cover over it want to keep that in place unless you're swapping it out for an actual processor because the pins in that socket are quite delicate. Uh, you have again the uh, uh, CPU fan and uh, system fan header right there. Here are the two heat sinks which are over your power delivery areas. Uh, the combo MOSFETs that I showed you guys on the box are actually below these so you can't see them directly uh, but these heat sinks are going to make sure that the heat created by those MOSFETs is dissipated adequately. And then you can see all the phases here for your power delivery uh, to the CPU, iGPU as well as your DDR3 memory. Finally for the surface of the board we have uh, another 8 pin CPU supplemental power connector right up there at the top so you will want to make sure you connect that to your power supply. Uh, especially if you're going to be overclocking or, well, I guess it, if you just want to get your system up and running, important to connect that one there. Finally, down here we have uh, on the side of the board your inputs and outputs that will be <clears throat> at the back of your computer case. Uh, there's lots and lots of USB 3.0 integrated onto this board. Uh, the USB 3.0 for the ports, uh, the two at the front as well as the two at the back here are natively controlled by the Z77 chipset. Uh, you also have additional USB 3.0 ports available by way of a VIA VL800 USB 3.0 uh, add-on chips. So um, two USB 3.0 here, two USB 3.0 here, two more USB 3.0 here. That gives you six total. Uh, I also like that they've uh, indicated to connect your mouse and keyboard, especially if you're just getting your system set up right here because uh, you're not always going to get recognition of those devices as you're just going through low-level BIOS stuff. Uh, so that's where you want to plug in your mouse and your keyboard. Also, if you have a mouse and keyboard that uses PS2, of course, you can plug it in right there. You get a combo PS2 port for an older mouse or a keyboard. You also have some video outs right here. Uh, if you're using a Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor that has integrated graphics, uh, you can access that by way of these connectors. So you get a VGA port right here, dual link DVI, as well as an HDMI output. You also have a gigabit Ethernet port. There are your two uh, Thunderbolt headers, so you can use those for Thunderbolt connectivity. Finally, you have audio connectors right here, so you got some analog audio jacks. Uh, the audio on the board is Realtek ALC892. Uh, it supports up to 7.1 channel audio, and then you also have an SPDIF uh, output right there for a digital audio output. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte Z77X UP4TH featuring the 1155 socket for second and third gen Intel Core CPUs as well as the Z77 chipset. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.